Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today it's Zircom Day. We're gonna have a look at several of the different Zircom land cards that I have. I've always been a fan of Zircom. It's one of those companies that I thought always made really great products and really innovative products like this parallel ethernet adapter, which was really revolutionary at the time. Zircom also did a lot in the wireless space, which was pretty cool. However, unfortunately, much is the case as with other companies, as we can see from this nice Wikipedia article here, eventually Zircom got bought out by Intel and pretty much dismantled with all employees being laid off. <sighs> Always sad when a story like that happens. However, I guess it's fair to say that they did leave us with some great products and had a great legacy. So today we're going to have a look at the different cards that I have here. Where applicable, I'll show you what the different features are of the cards, as well as what an installation looks like under Windows 95 or usage looks like under MS-DOS. So without further ado, let's get started. Here we have two Zircom Pocket Ethernet Adapter 3s, and they look pretty similar. I did notice one thing about them that is different. This one happens to have a matte finish, and this one has a glossy finish, so I guess they might have been manufactured in different places. If we flip them over, we can see there are labels on the back that talk more about it, model number, etc., etc. On the front, you have the parallel interface, and on the back, you have the power and Ethernet RJ45 interfaces. And one of the cool features about these is to connect them to your PC and screw it in. You can turn this little doohickus here and it spins it. I always thought that was really a cool design for these. As far as power options are concerned, you do have some choices. First, this is one of my favorite choices for a system that has PS2 ports. You have this nice connector that allows you to hook into a PS2 port and leach power from it. And these things take about 300 milliamps, so I guess that's okay. On this side, you hook in your PS2 keyboard or mouse, and here's our pigtail adapter that can plug right into the device, like so. If I can do this on camera, and there you have it. So now we're all connected. Now I guess there is dissenting thought about actually stealing power from a PS2 port. I've never had a problem, but I imagine some people have. So there's definitely that to keep in mind. And of course, if you can't find the PS2 adapter, you can always use a wall wart. And this also works well for systems that don't have a PS2 port. This is your standard wall wart. It's, in my case, 120 volts input, 12 volts output with 300 milliamps. So there's that as well. And these will connect in just as well as well. And now we've got connectivity for the case where we want to use a wall wart. Connecting the Pocket Ethernet 3, just plug into a parallel port, as you see here. Connect the leech adapter, I mean pigtail adapter, to a PS2 port, as you see here. And connect Ethernet, as you see here. And you're all set and ready to go. And here you can see a nice top-down view with everything connected in a nice green light. I also love to use this particular adapter in my Tandy 1000 configuration. Here you can see it plugged into the back of the system. And as far as finding these in the secondary market, you can see they've gotten a little bit pricey. Here's one listed for $280. Now, they do list for lower prices. Here's a second series one, which is a little bit cheaper, actually a lot cheaper. And anything that's not RJ45, they practically give away on eBay. So. Hopefully you can find one if you want one, but unfortunately they have gotten pricey. So let's go ahead and look at what my favorite application is for this device. And here you see an MS-DOS LAN manager floppy disk for the Zircom Pocket adapter, and it happens to be for the Ethernet 3. Here you can see us booting into MS-DOS using that floppy disk with the Zircom configured on LPT1 IRQ7. And what we're going to do is actually map a network drive to my Raspberry Pi and copy over all of the installers that we will need to conduct our little installation experiments today. I figured mine as well. I've got a network card hooked up, right? <laughs> so 
So I'll change over to the net directory on my Raspberry Pi and copy all the drivers that are needed over to drive C so that we're all set to go. Perfect. So here we are all booted up in Windows 95 and I'm going to try my first attempt at configuring the Pocket Ethernet 3 adapter. We'll do an add new hardware and then we'll do a next and we'll go ahead and actually let Windows try and find it itself. So Windows will go through its detection process as it always does for non plug and play hardware and we'll see what it comes up with here in just a second. It's finished. We can go to the details tab here and see what shows up and we'll see it found it. Okay, great. Perfect. Everything's good. Uh, yeah, let's click finish. And from there, it'll go ahead and copy some files over and from there we can restart. Okay, so far so good, right? Well, let's go to my computer and properties and go to device manager and see what happens. And what do we see? Well, we see we have a yellow exclamation point. Shucks. All right, no problem. Let's configure settings. Wait, there's nothing to configure. Okay, well, maybe this is a parallel port problem. Let's just go ahead and reboot and see if we can change the parallel port settings in the BIOS, perhaps. So here we are. I'm going to check the parallel port settings. Everything looks fine. 378 IRQ7. Okay, we can cancel that. Let's enable advanced LPT mode and we can exit. And let's go ahead and see what happens. And Windows does find an ECP printer port. Now let's see if anything improves. So back over to my computer and properties. Let's see what we see. Fingers crossed. And it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do now is actually just remove this network adapter. And we're going to use the Zircom drivers that I found online for Windows 95. So with that removed, we'll go ahead and reboot. And now that we're rebooted, we can go back to control panel and we'll head in here and do an add new hardware, much like we've tried once or twice already. And what I'll do is I'm going to point this to the location of the driver. So I'll say no, Windows, I don't want you to find my hardware. I'm going to scroll down and find a network adapter and then go next. And what we're going to do is point to a place where we have our disk. So we'll go to have disk and we'll go ahead and browse over. I've actually went ahead and unzipped this already, I believe. So we'll browse over and we will find it and we will say OK. And hey, lo and behold, there it is. We have a Zircom Pocket Ethernet 3 for Windows 95. Click OK. And what's going to happen? We'll go finish. And we'll go ahead and install the different drivers. We get to restart. When we come back and go to properties, fire up device manager here, go down to network adapters. And what do we see? It is detected. Awesome. So it worked. Let's go ahead and browse the network. And after a minute, the different network computers appear. We can go to the data directory and everything is working. Here we have the Pocket Token Ring Adapter 2 and compared to the Pocket Ethernet Adapter 3, it's absolutely massive, but it gets the job done. I can't imagine though, hooking this up to a parallel port with this size, <laughs> pretty big. Anyway, it does have the standard parallel adapter here. And on this side, you have a nine pin token ring adapter and power. If we flip it over, you can see once again, we have a nice label and we do have the signature turn to connect concept that we also had on the ethernet three. So that's kind of cool. Now regarding this, I bought it for one very specific purpose. Looking online at an eBay auction out of the corner of my eye, there was this box that contained two of these, and I also noticed this. So I essentially bought this so that I could have the Pigtail adapter that I'm going to use in the future on my Compact Presario 2200 when it gets here. So that's why I bought this, and otherwise I've never set up a token ring network. Next, we have the RealPort Ethernet 10100, with its RJ45 connector here and a Lincoln Activity Light here. Now, what's really nice about this card is there's no dongle. That's the advantage. However, the downside is that for this card, when you go to connect it to your machine, it will take up two PC card slots. You can see that this is a PC card as opposed to a card bus card, 
since there is a flat indicator here with no bumps. Usually the card bus cards are gold with small bumps. Anyway, if we flip this over, we can also see the designation right here, if I can get the camera to focus, that this is indeed a PC card card. So it will work with older machines like my LTE 5000 series based upon that. Connecting the RealPort card is pretty straightforward. Just plug in Ethernet like you see here and push the card into its slot, or you could plug in Ethernet later. Either way works great. So finding the real port on eBay is much more pleasant than finding the Pocket Ethernet Adapter 3. You can see you can have one of these for about 10 bucks. And in a lot of cases, they'll also include a modem. This one happens to be a combination, so that's pretty cool. $10 and it's yours. Granted, this one is card bus. So be careful in what you go to find, but I have found the non-card bus ones to also be around $10. So let's go ahead and install it. And what I did first was just go ahead and put it into the PCMCIA slot. And we get to this point and we can click next. And spoiler alert, it's not going to find it. So that's fine. Uh, what we can do then is go ahead and unzip these drivers that you see here, which are for that card. So I'll go ahead and do that quickly. And then from there, we can grab the directory of what it is and navigate over and run the setup program that accompanies this particular card, installing the software and the tools. All right, so from there we can click through it, next, 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 and we may have a reboot opportunity, then again we may not, and it looks like we are going to have a reboot opportunity, so we reboot, and on reboot we can click next here and see if it actually finds it, and with a little bit of luck, it will, but of course it doesn't. <laughs> so now we get the point of the location of where the drivers are. Isn't Windows 95 great? and then from there finish, and now it's going to be installed once again after we point to the Windows 95 installation directory because you always have to do that whenever you install network components. And let's go ahead and try and renew the IP address using WinIPconfig, and lo and behold, it is detected. Excellent, and we got a successful DHCP lease. We can go to network neighborhood, and we can go to the entire network. We will see that there is indeed a work group that is there outstanding so we can go ahead and click in there and find our different pcs so once again a success this card is installed and we're good to go next we have the wireless ethernet adapter with its 128 bit strong encryption in a very colorful box as you can see quite a nice box let's flip it over and have a look so on this side, we can see lots of nice advertising, and indeed, wireless networking has come of age. And actually, Zircom was pretty pioneering when it came to developing different types of wireless technologies, so they have the right to say that. As we open up the box, we can take a peek inside, and this is a really nice box, actually. And there's our nice colorful card, and of course, I've got it backwards and upside down. That makes for great video. Anyway, so looking at this particular card also has a flat ridge. Once again, indicative of the fact that this is a PC card and it looks like it belonged to some company at some point, but a very colorful card and a capable card for Windows 95, not MS-DOS as I have discovered. So there it is. Now we can actually take a second and look at its evil twin, the Cisco Aeronet 350. So we have the Zircom CWE1130 on the bottom and the Cisco Aeronet 350 on the top. This card is a much better choice, easy to configure. I know this is a Zircom video, but as a public service announcement, I will say that. If you're looking for a great wireless card for MS-DOS and Windows 95 that is PC card compatible, this is what you want. Sadly, not this. But we will demonstrate this today and show you how to set it up in Windows 95. Connecting the wireless card, also pretty straightforward. Just plug it in to the slot, and from there, that's the easy part. The hard part comes later in the form of installing drivers. So you can see that you can find this card on eBay for about $38, which is a little bit high, but don't buy it. Instead, buy this card. <laughs> buy this lovely Cisco Aeronet 350 
Trust me, you'll be a lot happier. I know it's a Zircom video, but I'm going to give you the best advice that I know. So let's go ahead and install the drivers for this card. And we'll go ahead and click on the executable, which will self-extract to that directory you see there. I'll go ahead and navigate to that directory and install the utilities. Now, I'm actually doing things in kind of a strange order here. What I ended up having to do was actually uninstall my Cisco Aeronet 350 drivers because they do conflict. But anyway, you will see that the utilities are installed. You will see later that that Aeronet client utility on the desktop is gone. Okay, so next I'm navigating to the driver directory and I put the card in the PCMCIA slot. You would think we would just click next and point to the driver location, but there's some sort of weird bug. It'll go ahead and start the installation and ask for the disk and you tell it where to go and it can't find it. So after doing much fun as you can see here, what I ended up doing, and I remember doing this in the past, is taking the directory and calling it X, just at the root of the drive, and then pointing to C colon backslash X, and then it installs. It is so weird. But anyway, there you have it. We got a message about DHCP because we need to do a couple of things. First, I'm gonna load the encryption manager, password is Zircom with capital X. That's the default. And we can see that WebKey1 is set and it's 128 bits, and indeed that is the web key I want. I'll go ahead and launch the link status monitor, but access point quality is poor because we're not connected. So let's go ahead and configure the access point. And this is so confusing, at least compared to the Aeronet 350. So I'll put in a client name, I'll put in an SSID, I'll click on weird things in different places. All right, I think we're done on this tab and there's nothing on the RF network tab and oh, home network tab. Hey, another SSID, Tsunami. Okay, we'll put in mine and a computer name because why not, right? Okay, well, that's kind of weird. Okay, now what? We need to put a web key in? Maybe, I don't know. I don't think so. We have a transmit key set. Network security, click on enable web because why not? Yeah, at least I think that's what we need to do. Hey, things went green. We're very secure now. Okay. Well, I think that's all we have to do. I don't see anything else interesting, so we'll go ahead and click OK. So we go through it. Great. But we're not associated, as you see in the bottom left-hand corner. Rats. All right. Well, let's go back to the settings. Ah, I think we need to use home network configuration. We're still not associated. Now, the problem was that I actually did not have this MAC address on my whitelist for my router. So I went ahead and fixed that, and then I hit renew, and lo and behold, we were able to get an address. So that's great. Perfect. So now we're connected. We can navigate over and look at network neighborhood like we've done in the past. And indeed, we will see machines show up. We can go to the Raspberry Pi, and we can see there is data. So this is great. We can go ahead and launch that link status meter again. And it's cool to see the signal strength versus quality, kind of a cool matrix. So there you have it. All right, well, that's what I had for you today. Hope you enjoyed the Zircom extravaganza. I certainly enjoyed installing all of these different cards and wrestling with Windows 95. Always a joy. Definitely subscribe to the channel. There's lots more content on the way. Ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when that new content is posted. If you like what you saw today, please do consider giving us a thumbs up. If not, please do consider sending me a strong message by pressing that thumbs down button twice. As always, it's been great having you along for the journey and I look forward to seeing you next time. But until then, bye for now.